Hey everybody, Kevin Phillips with Campus Reform here. The 4th of July is upon us and around the country millions of people are celebrating independence and taking time to reflect on how special it is to live here in the United States of America. But sadly, not everyone is proud to be an American this year. There's a good chance that this year will be the least patriotic 4th of July in decades. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but in many places around the country, Patriotism is almost a dirty concept now. The outrage mob has brainwashed millions of people into believing that the legacy of America is, is one of genocide and racism, not one of freedom and equality. Don't take my word for it though. Look at the polling data. Numerous surveys from Pew and Gallup show that the level of patriotism among Americans is at its lowest point on record. Most noticeably, it's young Americans who are most likely to say that they aren't proud to be American. Since 2017, actually, the number of young people considering themselves to be patriotic has been cut in half. Spend an hour watching the news or listening to leftist politicians and you'll quickly understand why people feel that way towards our country. Why is this? How could they not be proud of living in the freest, most prosperous and equitable society in the history of mankind? It starts on college campuses. For years now, our colleges have been churning out millions of graduates indoctrinated into believing they live in an oppressive country founded on genocide and white supremacy, not freedom and justice for all. So we're gonna count down the craziest examples of anti-Americanism on American college campuses so you can get a feel for just what we're up against. First up, Colorado State University. There, the school published an inclusive language guide to make sure students weren't offending one another with their words. Now that guide had a list of specific words to avoid using. On that list were the words, quote, America and American, which according to the school, should be avoided by students and staff because it, quote, erases other cultures and depicts the United States as the dominant American country. Next up at the University of Oklahoma, the student government voted to remove the Pledge of Allegiance from all meetings because of its, quote, problematic history. The fact that the pledge was written on Columbus Day as part of a celebration of the New World's discovery might offend some students, so they just took it out. If at any point this weekend you find yourself wanting to shout the words freedom at the top of your lungs, you might want to avoid Robert Morris University. This month, the school decided to change the name of their student IDs, which are known as freedom cards, after students said referring to them as such could make students of color feel dehumanized. Next up at Syracuse University, a conservative club was punished for asking their members to abide by the Constitution above all other laws. The university actually refused to grant the group official status on campus because according to them, asking students to pledge allegiance to the Constitution was discriminatory and could make some students feel excluded. At UT Austin, a law professor published an article saying it's time to scrap the Constitution and rewrite a new one, one that is less racist and has more gender inclusive language. They said the new constitution should include more about quote equality and inclusion. At UC Santa Cruz, the president of the school sent an email to the entire student body telling them that America is a quote white supremacist society. While at the University of Washington, the president there sent a similar email to students telling them that quote the cornerstone of all US social institutions is white privilege and systemic racism. At the University of Alabama, the Dean of Students said that the American flag is not a symbol of freedom and justice for all, but instead a symbol representing racism. Think about it. If you heard messages like those in class day after day, it might be easy to start to think your country is nothing to be proud of. After all, if you'd been taught America is nothing more than a racist country founded on genocide and oppression, what would there be to be proud of? The reality is, as long as our colleges and universities mislead students into thinking America is nothing more than an evil nation of racism and genocide, patriotism will continue to dwindle and future generations won't think our way of life is anything worth preserving. If that happens, we won't need to teach American exceptionalism in class because America will no longer be exceptional. If you want to learn more about what we're doing to combat the rise of anti-American sentiment on college campuses, head over to campusreform.org and join our team.